What is the status quo? The stat I have so much experience with the status quo. I have so much experience breaking the status quo. The status quo is the, the what, what does it mean? It means the state of things, the current state of affairs. That's what the status quo means. And my wife said, my wife said to me, we were talking uh, yesterday at dinner, she's like, you forget how powerful that status quo is. And you're like, yeah, I do forget. I've been breaking the status quo for years, but it's powerful to people that are in it. Once you get outside that status quo, people are going to be upset with you. The people that are in the status quo are going to be upset with you. Let me, let me just give you some, some, some secular examples of this. It, it, I was in research and development for many, many years. And it was literally my job. I love doing it. I love doing it. But it was literally my job to go to facilities, to go to power plants, and break the status quo. Figure out another way. Figure out a better way, a different way. And let me tell you something. Every single time I went with that goal, people were upset with me. Every single time. Why? Because people that are in the status quo they don't like people that are outside of it. And look, and, and I know a lot of you that are maybe raising children are going to identify with this and you're going to have had this thought. I've, all status quo thinkers are like this, whether it be secular or spiritual, and we'll get to the spiritual in just a second. But they can't stand that people are outside the status quo. I've had some wild ideas, man, wild ideas, and we've tried in just secular experimentation, some wild stuff. And some of that stuff worked, and some of it didn't. I remember one time, I remember one time, I had read all kinds of papers and, and research on this, this one idea that this one gas, and it was a poison gas, it was, it was hydrogen sulfide gas, that if used in the proper way, could remove a certain pollutant. But the problem is, in all these papers and these research, it was all theoretical. Nobody had actually been bold enough, or some would say stupid enough, to actually try it. So I was, let's, let's try it. Let's run an experiment. So I literally brought a tanker of hydrogen sulfide gas, poison gas, onto a facility. Look, it was all safe, and we made sure everything was, was done correctly. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of people like, this guy's an idiot. This guy's a fool. This guy's going to kill us all. There's a lot of outside. I mean, these are the status quo people. What, they, what do they want? They want things to stay the same. They want what is there to stay there. They want the original idea to stay. And guess what? When it didn't work, they were like, see, we told you he was a fool. See, we told you. But guess what? Then we went and we tried. You say, well, if you have a good idea and it does work, then all the naysayers will be silenced. Wrong. Wrong. Because I've taken some wild ideas, and we had some crazy successes. Man, they, we had some successes that were game changers. That literally, we had major breakthroughs with this type of outside the status quo thinking. And you know what they said? Idiot. Jerk. Just talking all kinds, just lying about you, persecuting you, talking trash about you. What's the point I'm trying to get you to see? The point I'm get you, trying to get you to see is that being outside the status quo, it comes with persecution. It, it just comes with the territory of hanging out out there, of outside that status quo, of being outside that way that everybody else does things. Turn to 1 Peter chapter number 2. 1 Peter chapter number 2. It comes with the territory. Now let's apply that to your spiritual life. Now let's apply that to your Christian life. So look, don't get this idea. You just got to be ready for that. That's all I'm trying to get you to see. You just need to be ready for that. Status quo people are always going to be upset at people that are outside the status quo. And that's what the Bible is talking about in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. They're always going to be upset. And it doesn't matter if you succeed or you fail. They'll still be upset. So don't get this idea like, oh, man, in 20 or 30 years, they're, they're going to see. No, they're not. 
Just realize that being outside the status quo is going to come with persecution. But what's the other choice? Being in that box? No, thank you. I don't want to be in there. Because the, the people in that box are so blinded to everything. No way you could force me inside that thing. Look at 1 Peter chapter number uh, 2. Look at verse number 9. I just love this verse right here. This is exactly, this verse encompasses what I just told you. It says, you're a chosen generation. Ha! Ah, a royal priesthood. This all sounds pretty good, a chosen generation. It sounded like I'm, like I'm Israel here, right? Like, oh, I'm better than everybody. A royal priesthood and holy nation. Look at us. Look at all these great things that the Bible is saying. It's, that it's like a peculiar people. You're like, what? Which of these things doesn't belong? You know what that means? You're going to be outside the status quo. Is that people, most people that are in the status quo are going to look at you and be like, that's weird. You're going to be outside the status quo going, these people are crazy that are in there. But they're going to look at you and they're going to say, you're peculiar. The Bible is just pointing it straight out for you right there. Especially when you start making moves, when you start living that Christian life. You actually start trying to live godly. You start, you start throwing off things like, well, you know, maybe we don't want to do daycare at day one out of the hospital. Maybe we don't want to, you know, have somebody else raise our children. And, you know, maybe we don't want to put our kids in, in public school. And look, people are going to take that. The status quo people just like in the technical applications. Look, going out and trying to find a better solution had nothing to do with the guy that developed the original solution 20 years ago. I wasn't mad at that guy. I didn't even care about it. I was just out there to solve a problem in a better way. That's all. And you go out there and you say, you know what, we're not going to do the public school thing. The public school people are going to be upset at you. They're going to think you're judging them. You're like, I don't care what you do. Do what you want to do. And I'm going to do what I want to do. It doesn't matter. They're going to be upset. They're taking it as a judgment on themselves, and they're going to persecute you for it. You know, you don't want the results that everybody else is getting. That was me. Like, I mean, it was obvious. If I did everything the same way as everybody else, I was going to get the same results. I'm like, I don't want that. The drinking, the drugs, the fornication... You come up and you start saying that you would like your children to grow up and, and be pure and walk to their wedding day, you know, pure, and people look at you like you're crazy. You idiot! You fool! That's experience life! What are you, in a cult? To operate outside this box, people are going to persecute you. That's what you need to understand. But the point is this, folks, and this is what Jesus is getting across to, period, to Peter. This peculiar Christian life has to be yours or you will not survive. You will not stick with it. The war must be yours, Peter. That's what Jesus is saying. 